Hi, my name is Becca and welcome to my YouTube channel Sweetheart Knits. is where I talk about whatever I want to, <laughs> mostly knitting, sometimes sewing, at some point crochet. Um, I do lots of fiber arts and I'm hoping to get into sewing this summer. But this is where I talk about all that stuff and make videos about all that stuff and talk about what I'm making. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I wanted to sit down and film a little podcast episode. Um, I filmed my first one a couple of weeks ago it got a lot of feedback, which was awesome. Um, it was really exciting to see so many people interested in what I was making. Um, but that was my everything of 2022 video. And I went over everything I made last year, or everything that I could find <laughs> that I made last year. Um, so I thought it would be fun to kind of share like what I'm making right now, the whips that I have, um, and the finished objects that I have for 2023 so far. Um, so let's go ahead and get into that. I think that I'll start off with finished objects. Okay, um, so first of all, I'm wearing my Easy Beanie by Brandy Cheyenne Harper, um, and a sweater that I bought at a thrift store like three or four years ago that I did not make. Um, but this hat I did make, um, it's the Easy Beanie by Brandy Cheyenne Harper. I wear the bejeepers out of this thing. It's like a year and a half old at this point. And I probably wear it a third of the year, <laughs> every year when it gets cold like this. Um, it's made out of Farmer's Daughter Fibers Pishkin, um, which is their Rambouillet base. I absolutely love it. It's aged really well. I didn't really like working with it <laughs> when I made this beanie. Um, when I made it, I had COVID. So I like didn't have focus for anything, which is why I made it. It's a super easy pattern. Um, but when I made it, it was kind of difficult to work with. It was very, it was almost dry. Like the, the wool was super, super dry. It kind of felt like working with cotton. If you've ever worked with like a really, really, um, dry, unrefined cotton, that's what it felt like. Um, and there was some VM in the, in the fiber, which was fine. I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Um, but at the time I was really cranky because I had COVID and every time I would get like a little branch in my yarn, I would be like really, really irritated. Um, but I really, really recommend it. It's held up so well and it's aged beautifully. Like it's gotten so soft and it's super structured. I do like, um, I like to wear this slouchy and I like to wear it rolling up the brim. So it's like this rolled brim instead of folded over like I have it. Um, and it bounces back really well whenever I like manipulate the brim into a different shape. So I really recommend it. It's great yarn. It's a great pattern. If you are looking for a really mindless beanie pattern, um, I recommend 100%. So let's look at finished objects for 2022. Um, I think I only have one, but... The one is really cool, okay? Let me see, where did I put it? There we go. Okay. This is my beautiful shawl. Let me try to hold it out so you can see it. Okay, so this shawl has a bit of a story. So I started off using a pattern. I used um, the Jane A pattern from a noble thread on Ravelry. Um, and I, like I, I used, it's a, it's a pretty traditional triangular shawl pattern. So I used the garter tab and cast on and all that. Um, but I pretty quickly got rid of the pattern. <laughs> like I used it, I used it for like maybe 20 rows and then I went off and did my own thing. So I freehanded these lace panels and the stripes and um, completely changed the border of it from the Jane A shawl. 
And I really like how it came out. It, as you can see, it drapes awesome. Like the drape on this is so pretty. Um, I used, I used um, Peddler's Pack Alpaca. It's 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 got to be a really small farm somewhere. I bought it off of um, somebody's D stash on um, Reddit. <laughs> Somebody was selling it, and I got two skeins. Um, I think I ended up with eight ounces of it. Um, from that D stash for like fifteen dollars, um, but I snatched it up because I really liked the color of it. It's this, it's this blue, and then I held that double with um, a Knit Pixel Loft mohair, which is also blue, <laughs> as you can see. And then for these white sections, I used Juniper Moon Farms um, merino, also held together with the Loft mohair. Um, and this was this was a pretty good stash buster for me. All three of these yarns were in stash, and I ended up using all of the Aloft mohair. Like, I have no grams left. <laughs> like, I actually um, ran out of it halfway through my cast off and had to do the rest of the cast off just with the alpaca. Um, but I really like it. It came out really nice. I wish it was a little bit softer. I had anticipated it softening up a little bit more than it did. Um, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I thought I thought it would be a little bit a little bit better next to skin but it'll totally serve my purposes I'm not a big shawl person um, but I really wanted something really warm to put underneath of my jackets walking um, to my university and this will totally serve the purpose and I think it's so pretty like I think it's so pretty I really like the way that I freehanded it um, I like the way that I did all the increases. I really love the little lace, the little lace panels. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Good, good shawl. Um, here's what it looks like on. I like tucking the ends underneath right here. But yeah, it's, it's not scratchy. Like, it doesn't bother me to wear. Um, but it's not soft <laughs> like I don't put it on and I don't want to like nuzzle in it you know what I mean like sometimes you make a shawl and you just kind of want to like bury your entire face in the fabric and this is not one of those shawls um but it was all from stash and it is awesome and it's super warm um it's totally going to serve the purposes that I wanted it for um but yeah so that's that I was I was thinking about writing I don't know. I don't think I'll write a pattern for it. I was thinking about writing a recipe for it, but I don't know how I feel about that because I started off with a pattern. Um, like, I don't want, even though this obviously looks nothing like um, the Jane A shawl, I don't want to use somebody else's intellectual property. Like, I'm just not sure how I feel about it. Even though, the, even though that pattern is really basic and I only really use, like, the basic um increase instructions for how to make a triangular shawl like I just don't know how I feel about it so I'm kind of gonna ruminate on that one for a bit longer see what I think it's it's a really pretty I really like the way that I did it it's really pretty um so I might I might write a recipe someday but I need to kind of figure out how I feel about that and if that's like a morally gray area or not for me and right now I don't know so I'm just gonna let it sit and let it be. I have everything written out that I did to it in my notebook, so if I end up wanting to do something, I can. Um, but as of right now, I'm satisfied to just let it be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have really pretty pictures of this on my Instagram. I'm not gonna lie. I don't usually plug the Instagram here, but I really like the way that I photographed this. <laughs> so if you want to see pretty pictures of this shawl, go check out my Instagram in my bio. Okay, let's move on to whips. It is time for the whips. I love everything that I'm working on right now so much. Like, usually I have at least one pattern that's like on my back burner that I'm not super into. And right now I'm really into everything. Um, so let's do, let's do littlest thing first. Not the Oslo socks. Are they the Oso socks? We're looking this up. The 
The Ovis socks. They're the Ovis socks. These are the Ovis socks by Petit, the Petit Knitter. And I have, I have such a knitting crush on her patterns. I love everything that she's designed. Um, and these are just like super cute all over colorwork socks. I love the little sheep motif. Like, I think they're so cute. Um, I, so the way the sock is designed is you knit all the way through. Um, there's an afterthought heel, which I am going to do. I was kind of going back and forth on it. Um, I've done afterthought heels before and they fit me quite well. I just don't really like stopping in the middle of a project to put in a line and I don't like having to go back and do a heel after I like already want to be done with the sock. But I'm going to do it anyway because I like the way that she has it designed and with an afterthought heel I can I think reinforce the heel better um, because it's going to be really important to reinforce the heel on these because they are my first non-super wash socks. So I'm knitting these socks out of um, two different colors of Cloudborn Highland wool. Um, I think it's espresso and natural. Um, I'm really, so the reason that I, I decided to do this is one, um, I knew I wanted to make this sock in neutrals. That's the way that the Petite Knitter has her sample worked up and I really, really like the look of it. Um, so I knew I wanted to use neutrals and I also knew um, that I wanted to use stash and I didn't have um, any super wash sock yarn in stash that was in neutrals and I didn't want to buy any. Um, so that was the first thing and it's really cold right now here in Colorado. It's actually snowing really hard as I'm recording this podcast. Um, and while I love my hand knit socks, I do get cold in them. Um, so I was hoping that if I use some non super wash as like a good house sock or as like a dedicated, it's really, really, really cold out sock. Um, even though it would be like getting wear and it would probably wear out faster, it would be warmer. So that exchange would make it them worth it, in my opinion. Um, so my hope is that if I reinforce the heel, um, by doing like, I'm thinking I'm going to do like every other stitch color work with these. So like, I have like some really thick floats on the back, you know, do, do one stitch in natural and one stitch in espresso and switch off the entire heel. My hope is that if I do that, um, the floats will help reinforce the heel and it'll keep from getting holes longer. I know it inevitably will get holes because it's a non super wash sock, but hopefully it'll last longer that way. And then I'll have like some really nice, dedicated, warm, thick snow socks. But yeah, I really, I really like the way this is working up. I think it's really, really cute. Um, I'm really excited to just kind of wear them. I've, so this winter has kind of been the winter of me realizing that I really need to make myself some good thick boot socks and some good thick socks because it's so cold here and I commute to my university usually about three days a week per semester um, and my commute involves a 20 minute walk <laughs> and on that 20 minute walk I get really really freaking cold. <laughs> So it's really important for me right now to like actually make things that are significantly warm so I don't have to wear like 12 layers of of clothing <laughs> to school. Um, and warm socks are a very important part of that process I have learned. So I think that's going to be what a lot of my focus is this summer. I do a lot of socks in the summer because, you know, it's summer and I don't want to work on a whole sweater. So that's, I think, going to be a lot of the socks that I make this year. But... This is going to be the first one. I'm really excited. I'm having a really good time. I really enjoy knitting color work. Um, so they're kind of they're kind of flying for me because I just want to get through the next repeat, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do... So this sock motif only shows up once. Um, the way that the, the sock is typically knit, you do the sock motif and then you just do this um, like repeating color work pattern all the way down. But I actually think I'm going to flip the chart and do another row of sheep right before the um, toe and flip them around so either like facing me if that makes sense so instead of them being like up and down like this I'll flip them upside down so that way they're like this <laughs> and facing me on the heel and I think that'll be really cute so I'm just gonna do that it'll be fun 
Um, but yeah, so that is, that is my current sock. Okay, and then my other two whips right now, currently, are both sweaters. Um, it is a very bad idea for me to have two sweaters going on at the same time right now, because inevitably I'll end up leaving one for the other. But I really wanted to. <laughs> I really wanted to cast on another sweater, um, so I did, and it's just what's going to happen right now. So, the first sweater that I started first is my Promenade Blouse by Kadri. Well, designed by Kadri. <laughs> Um, and it's this really pretty, like, it's, it's this really pretty striped sweater, and it alternates stripes of a DK weight, um, in her case it's a DK weight alpaca, in my case it's a DK weight wool. Um, stripes of a DK weight yarn, and stripes of a, um, one strand of mohair. So it's this really pretty, like, you get these, like, sheer stripes, and these thicker stripes, and it's just this really cool texture. Um, and it's also really, really feminine, which is why I wanted to cast it on. Um, most of my sweaters are quite boxy, which I like. I like cozy, comfy, boxy sweaters. Um, but I made my ranunculus last month. And it's very feminine, and it feels very feminine. Um, and my even, even though my balloon cardigan isn't quite as feminine, it also feels quite feminine. And I really like that about both of those. Um, and I'm wearing them a lot, <laughs> like a lot more than some of my boxier sweaters. So I thought that getting like a tighter fitting, more feminine sweater would be really nice and would be a nice addition to my wardrobe. So I cast this guy on. It's a circular yoke sweater. I'm already through the yoke, as you can see. I've split for the sleeves and done like four inches on the body, four or five inches on the body. Um, and I'm really, really liking the way it's worked up so far. I, I've, I've wanted to do this sweater for a long time, and I've always known that I wanted it to be black. I don't know why. I just want it to be black. I think it'll um, offset the sheer a little bit if it's a darker color, even though it'll still be, like, the stripes will still be see-through. I think the darker color will kind of hide it a little bit more, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty modest dressing person. Um, so I think that the, the darker, the darker mohair will kind of help with that. Um, and I think that it'll, it'll get a lot of wear. I haven't ever made a black sweater and I wear a lot of black. So I think that, I think that choosing this color will be really easy to match it with like the rest of my wardrobe. So I have done a few modifications to this because of course I have. I have never knit a pattern straight without like changing something about it. So, the way that a lot of people wear this sweater is they wear it with a tank top underneath, because it's sheer. I hate <laughs> layering um, my knits with tank tops, especially if I have to wear a tank top with it. I will never wear it. I don't like it. It's not usually comfortable for me. Um, so, instead, I decided to make these stripes right here, the ones that are going to go across my bust, these three lines. Um, I used double mohair on those three stripes. Um, I changed my gauge a little bit, but it shouldn't be that noticeable. And I think that you can, like, if I hold it up like this, these are the stripes that I doubled up on. You can really see the difference in how see-through it is. So I know that, like, with these stripes, I'm going to have, like, a fair bit of modesty. Hopefully you're not going to be able to see my bra through it. And then with these ones, they will be like a little bit sheer and they'll still have kind of that factor that I want in the sweater. So hopefully that way it's a lot more wearable for me because I don't have to wear something underneath if I don't want to. Um, and it'll be, I mean, I mostly did this just so it's more wearable. Personally, I don't want my sweater to be see-through <laughs> in this area of my body. Um, so my hope is that the double thickness stripes will solve that problem and I'll still get the sheer stripes for the rest of the sweater. Um, I really like the way it's working up so far. It's a pretty simple pattern. Um, it's really well written. This is my first time making a um, Kadri pattern. Um, and I like the way that she has it laid out. It's very simple. I think that if you're somebody who's pretty new to knitting, you could make this sweater pretty easily, as long as you kind of understand the nuances of gauge and drape. 
because that's what a lot of the like hard part of the sweater is is matching gauge um, because you're switching needles every stripe um, the mohair uses a bigger needle and the DK uses a smaller needle to keep the like size consistent all the way through the body. Um, so swatching is super important for this sweater. If you want to make the sweater, please do a swatch. I don't like swatching either. I don't usually do it. I did it twice for this sweater because I wanted to be on gauge. Um, and I ended up going down a full needle size for both um, of the stripes. Because I want, I want a really tight fitting sweater. I want this to have like zero to two inches of ease. So I ended up going down to match gauge, picked a size, picked the smallest size, actually an extra small, which should give me about um, an inch of, of ease. But yeah, I really like this. I really like the way it's turning out. Um, no issues so far. I can't wait to see how it fits. I haven't actually tried it on yet. I should do that soon. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to add a lot of wear. I'm excited to see what happens with it. Oh, I forgot to talk about what yarn I'm using. Okay, so I am using... Um, I actually don't have the yarn attached to this right now because I'm in, I'm in between rows. So I'm using um, Drops Mohair. Just um, ash gray from my stash. This is what I have left over after my Regulus. I have like two full balls of mohair left over. I used a lot less than I thought I would. Um, but so I'm using ash gray, drops mohair. I like drops mohair a lot. It doesn't bother me at all. I know a lot of people are sensitive to it. Um, I don't find it irritating. It's inexpensive and I, I am in college, so I don't have that much money to spend on like a higher quality mohair. So I am a big fan of drops mohair. And then I am using Quince & Co. Phoebe in the, I think it's Kiron? Kiron? Uh, this, <laughs> in the black. <laughs> um, this is their Phoebe base, which is a 100% merino. It's really, really, I don't know if you can see, it's really tightly spun. So it has a lot of stitch definition. Um, I'm really enjoying the way that it's working up. I think that having such a non-fluffy, tightly spun yarn is adding a lot of contrast to the super fluffy and light mohair stripes. Um, and I really like that effect. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, and it's been really nice to work with. I really, really like it. Um, I'm probably going to get more at some point. Not right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these are, this is, this is from Stash. I ended up buying the Quince & Co. Um, last year, like at the end of last year in December. Because I knew this is what I wanted to cast on next. But, yeah, it's lovely. I really like it. 10 out of 10. I can't wait to see what it looks like once it's done. It's really hard to kind of see what it's going to be because it really needs to be blocked. Like, it, it's, it's, it, it kind of wants to squish up on itself because of the alternating stripes. So I'm hoping that once I stretch it out, it'll be a lot more drapey and form-fitting. So... There is my promenade blouse. Now let's move on to the new one. Okay, so my last whip is a brand new pattern that I have been wanting to cast on since it got announced, um, probably like two months ago. So this is the beginning of my Building Blocks Drop pattern by Amy Sure Makes over on Instagram. She is one of my favorite Instagram follows. I think that her photos are really beautiful. I really admire the way that she goes about designing. I like. I want to be a designer. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I started this YouTube account, actually. I want to be a designer. Um, and watching the way that she goes about it teaches me a lot. Um, specifically the way that she goes about size inclusivity. Um, it's something that's really important to me and something that I want to get good at. Um, and it's also really difficult for me because I am in a really small petite body. So I know how to design for my really small petite body. I don't know how to design for bigger bodies. Um, and watching the way that she goes about it and has taught herself that <laughs> is really inspiring. So I'm kind of hoping that I can be like her someday. Um, but anyway, so this is the beginning of the building blocks drop. So I initially cast on the promenade blouse to, um, do the knit along that Young Folk Knits here on YouTube is running. 
Um, she's running a um, bougie sweatshirt knit along, which is just um, any sweater that you think is going to like take the place of a sweatshirt in your wardrobe, like a really cozy sweater. Um, and I started the promenade blouse to be that sweater, and I kind of got through the yoke and realized that it's not going to be a cozy sweater. <laughs> like, it's not going to be a casual sweater. It's going to be kind of a nice, nicer looking sweater. It's going to be kind of a dress up piece, I guess. So I cast this on <laughs> to be my bougie sweatshirt. Um, it's a drop shoulder sweater. It's super cozy. I'm knitting it out of Nuiden, which is some of my favorite yarn, and it's a super cozy yarn for me. It's super soft and squishy and light and all of that good stuff. Um, so this is my replacement bougie sweatshirt <laughs> sweater. As you can tell, it's not much right now. Um, I'm knitting the split hem version that in the I'm knitting the split hem from the pattern. Um, and I'm gonna do kind of contrasting ribbing. So I have I have some leftover white Newton from my balloon cardigan. I have about a hundred grams of it left over. Um, and this it's just white. It's called snow. <laughs> um, so I'm using that for I'm gonna use the white for the ribbing. I'm gonna use it for the neck, the cuffs, the hem, um, and then I might use it for the pocket. I'm gonna put two pockets on it. I might use it for the pockets, um, but I haven't decided yet. So we're gonna do that, and that's mostly because the color that I'm using, I don't have that much of. So this is the colorway that I'm using for the rest of the sweater. Um, this is Nuiden in Vanessa. And I've had this in stash for six months or so. I think I bought it over the summer. Um, and I really, really like this color. Um, I initially bought it to be a ranunculus. My idea was to make a ranunculus out of it. Um, so I only bought 300 grams. I have since decided that I don't want a ranunculus out of this yarn. Um, and it, it's going to be a building blocks. <laughs> so I'm really excited to do it. I even... I even painted my nails to match. Amazing, right? Um, but I'm really excited to make this pattern. I think it's going to end up being really cozy. It's going to be a great staple for me. Um, so I knit up the gauge, and this colorway, it, it's pretty it's pretty thick as far as noting goes. It works up pretty much like a worsted holding it single. So I'm going to be holding this single, but the white, the snow, is quite a bit thinner in my experience. I don't know if you can if you can tell. But that's quite a bit thinner in my experience than the Vanessa is. So I'm actually holding the snow double for the ribbing. Um, but I'm not just knitting it double straight. I'm knitting it double and then I'm kind of coming over and pulling it apart a little bit and thinning it out um, to try to kind of match it with the thickness of the Vanessa. Because double stranded it's too thick and single stranded, it's way too thin. So I'm kind of just holding it double, pulling it apart, thinning it out a little bit as I go, which is a little bit tedious, um, but I have matched gauge. Um, and I'm gonna do, I want it to be a pretty long split hem. I wanna have a good amount of ribbing on this. In my opinion, the more ribbing on a sweater, the more cozy the sweater. And I want this to be a really cozy sweater, so there's gonna be a lot of ribbing. Um, but this is the, for the back of the split hem, so it's gonna be the longer, piece of ribbing. The pattern, I think the pattern has you go for like five inches. I think I'm gonna go for six or seven. I'm kind of just gonna go until my heart tells me to stop. <laughs> um, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I love knitting with Nuiden. Um, I'm really excited for the for the pattern. And yeah. Um, and check out check out Young Folk, Folk Knits here on um, YouTube. She's a really cool podcaster. One of the big reasons I started podcasting here. Um, I really love her content and I love the way that she goes about podcasting. I think she has an amazing production value. Like it's kind of what I strive for <laughs> is to have a podcast that looks as good as hers. Um, but yeah, so check her out if you haven't already. But yeah, so that is what my building blocks is going to be so far. I'm sure that I'll change things as I go. I'm kind of a fly by the seat of my pants type of knitter. So if I feel like doing something different, I will. I might go to one pocket. I might do four pockets. 
I might completely change the neckline, which I've been thinking about, but we'll kind of have to see when I get there. This will be my first drop shoulder sweater ever. Um, so I'm excited to try out the construction. I've never made one before. I've only ever made raglans and circular yoke sweaters. Um, and then my, I've made a couple of cardigans that were seamed, but nothing drop shoulder. So I'm interested to see how that goes. I actually don't even like know how the, how the construction works all the way. Um, so I'm excited to like try that out. And then I'm knitting the smallest size with no bust starts. But yeah, so that is the podcast. That is everything that I'm currently working on. Um, I have a couple of things that I'm going to be starting really soon. Um, I got selected to test the Lady of Alderian hat by um, Inna Makes. I love her. <laughs> She's one of my friends over on Instagram. I will be casting that on within the next week or so. It's a super chunky hat, so I only think it, I think it will only take me a couple of days to make. Um, and and then I want to make some boot socks, as I as I mentioned. That'll be the next sock cast on. Um, but I'm just kind of I'm just kind of going with it. I'm just kind of doing what I want. School just started back up again this week, so I'm just kind of gonna go with what feels right. Because right now knitting is very much a decompression activity after I'm done with my work for the day. So I'm just kind of gonna go with it. Do what I want. Change what I want knit on what I want. <laughs> and if that means I have 16 whips right now, that means I have 16 whips right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you spending time on this channel and supporting me. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos for everybody, but I am very new to this. So if you have anything for me to improve on, if you have any video ideas that you would like to see from me, feel free to pop that in the comments below. If you've stuck around for this long, Consider giving me a like, maybe even a subscribe if you want to see my face again. Um, and I hope that you have a really great day. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to record the next podcast and edit it and share it with everybody. But yeah, thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.